but really it's it's my current dating life and my de- my pe- dating experiences i ran into a lot of men who want the girlfriend benefits um but they want you to cut off everyone else they want the ex- exclusivity <laughs> there you go <laughs> they want that but they don't want to give you a title um so they're free to do what they want but they want you to be kind of bound to uh, whatever you're building. And then who knows down the line, you know, three or four months down the line, it's nothing. It goes nowhere. Today's guest is a mother of two. She's a believer, a fitness instructor and influencer with more than 200,000 followers on Instagram. Brave Hearts community, let's show some love to Jazzy Nicole. How are you doing this evening? Hi, I am doing amazing. I'm super excited to meet with you. So thank you so much for requesting an interview. I'm overwhelmed with joy. This is exciting. So thank you. I'm doing great. How are you? I am good. I'm I'm glad that we get to knock this out because I've been following you for a while. But once I seen the real, we're going to talk about that later on in the show. I was like, oh, got to hit her up. (laughs) Let's jump into this because I don't want to waste any of your time. What inspired you to become a fitness instructor? So fitness has not always been the most important thing to me. I was originally 235 um, and a lady that I work with by the name of Vicky, she owns a studio called Natural Measure Cycling at this time here in Indianapolis. But I was with her every day. So every day on, on site at work, it was always me and Vicky. And when she got into fitness, she brought me along. So she kind of got me excited about wanting to do fitness, wanting to eat right, wanting to lose weight. So since then, it's been so inspiring. It's been a part of me. It's been a release for me. Um, and I've been riding along with Vicky here at the studio at Natural Measures in the meantime. So that's what got me into it. It was really her. It was really Vicky. Oh, that's, yeah. that's what's up. Now, with the show is Scary to Remarry, of course, mm-hmm. a lot of the stuff I talk about is is pre-engagement coaching is people who've been through a divorce and they want to love again. You know, maybe they want to try this marriage thing again. Uh, and then people that's just dating, they just kind of in this process of, you know, huh, maybe I want to. They just kind of teetering. You know, this is what I'm here for. So, of course, a lot of stuff I talk about is relationships. I want to ask you about a healthy lifestyle and can that enhance a relationship? Oh, yeah, for sure. I think if you pour into yourself in any sort of facet, whether spiritually, emotionally, uh, financially, physically, you really have to pour into yourself first before you can pour into someone else because they receive your overflow. So, oh, yeah, for sure. It can definitely enhance a relationship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because when you was telling me about your weight loss Mm -hmm. process, I was 280. Oh, yeah, and now I'm down to like 190. Come on now, come on. Congratulations. That's pretty dope. Yeah, so yeah. shout out to all, all of us in the in the weight loss game. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I wanted to talk to you about the reel that you posted because when I seen it, I was cracking up. And I wonder <laughs> what, what you had on there. And the reel you says. We're not together, but you bet not be out here entertaining other men. <laughs> <laughs> right. What a, what inspired you to create that reel? So, you know, there's this trend. It's the, it's the trend that's going on now. Um, but really, it's it's my current dating life and my, de- my pe- dating experiences. I ran into a lot of men who want the girlfriend benefits, um, but they want you to cut off everyone else. They want the ex- exclusivity. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. They want that, but they don't want to give you a title. Um, so they're free to do what they want, but they want you to be kind of bound to uh, whatever you're building. And then who knows down the line, you know, three or four months down the line, it's nothing. It goes nowhere. So for me in this dating season that I'm in, yes, I'm single, um, but single doesn't mean that I'm bound to anyone. It doesn't mean that um, I'm going on a thousand different dates, but it does mean that I'm allowing myself to um, get to know other people that I'm open to experiencing other other people, other men, and I'm not going to cut that off for a potential. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's up with that though? Like how what? how selfish is that? Very. 
<laughs> it, but, okay, so help me understand. I don't, I personally feel like you should be selfish in the dating season. Now, of course, you have to give to whoever you're invested in, but this is it's just as much as an interview for you as it is for me. And to block myself off to say, hey, I'm, I'm seeing this person. Um, uh, I'm seeing this person. I don't know where it's going to go. I don't know if he's really interested in me. So I'm just going to block off everyone else. I don't think that that's ideal for me, not in this season. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Because I heard some, there are some women that have took that route where they was like, mm -hmm. okay, I'm going to, uh, as they say, I'm going to let go of my roster and yeah. I'm going to try to talk to this one guy to get to know him or whatever. And then mm -hmm. in the end, they end up getting burned. Right. Unfortunately. Yes. Oh <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Getting burned. We've all been there. <laughs> Oh, so you got rid of the roster before? Oh, yeah, I got rid of the roster. A few times I got rid of the roster, you know, because I thought I was going to go somewhere, and it didn't. But I personally, I do think, though, that over time, naturally, people will start to fall off as you begin to focus on someone who actually, you know, captures your interest, someone who's actually interested in you. When the roles are, um, when it's reciprocated, so when the energy is reciprocated, everyone else tends to fall off, and that's okay. That's That's natural. Um, but I don't think that you need to start off with just dating one person and investing all of your time and putting all your eggs in one basket for one person and then it not go anywhere. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I agree. I feel that 100%. Mm -hmm. I want to ask you about when it comes to dating and because for a lot of men, right? A lot of men are selfish. That's, that's uh -huh. right. <laughs> a lot mm -hmm. of men are selfish. But yeah. when do you... Like, how do you know when to start let, letting people go? Like, is it is there like a checklist? Okay, listen, listen. My my friends, my friends say I'm like the block queen, and I really am. So I am the type of person where I feel like once I feel like I am chasing you, once I feel like the energy is not reciprocated, it's time for me to fall back. Now. I can have, I'll have the conversation with you one time. One time I'll have the conversation. Like, this is how I'm feeling. Is this how you feel? Uh, let's talk about it. After that one time, if it happens again, I'm assuming that you have someone else's, someone else has your interest and that's okay. That's perfectly fine. And then I may just block you or I may just say, hey, go be great. But yeah, I, it just, it really depends. It depends on the situation. Um, it's definitely after a conversation, especially if I feel like there is potential in this person. I do want to have that conversation like, hey, so-and-so, this is how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like you may not be interested. Am I reading this right? Because maybe it's just me. You know, you have different backgrounds than I have. So maybe it's just me. Let me try to understand it. After we have that initial conversation, if it happens again and I don't feel valued, I don't feel like my presence is appreciated, I don't feel like you're making time for me like I would for you, then it's my cue to exit. And I'm completely okay with that. Right now, um, I've been through a lot and my single season is my season and I'm okay with being single. So for that reason, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I feel like I have to... Um, coach somebody on how to be with me where I have to force somebody to be with me because I love being with Jasmine. So I'm okay with that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. That's for real. How, how about friendships? Like how long should yeah. this whole friendship thing be? Because here was my thing. I just want to ask you real quick. Well, say to you real quick, because mm -hmm. if you're not familiar with my story, I, I married my wife and six months after meeting on Instagram. Oh, so sweet. Yeah, that is so sweet. <laughs> okay, so you know, we we dated long distance. It actually took like a year total. We married in six months, but we still lived mm -hmm. apart for you know the other six months until I relocated mm -hmm. to Texas. But people say that's that was fast and stuff because I you know I was married for fifteen years, went through a divorce. But our friendship, we were cool. But I was like. I don't want to be your friend too long because if we just, if it's just indicative of being a friend, then that's like, if I talk to you on the phone or we talking on Skype yeah. or whatever, yeah, like, yeah, this date was pretty cool. And I'm like, so I'm the friend now. Yeah. <laughs> right. Like, what are your thoughts on the whole friendship thing? Do you think the friendship thing should like be years on end or should you just let people know up front what you're looking for? 
See, okay, so that's a really good question. And I do think it's dependent upon the person um, because our experiences shape our present. So, you know, for some people, it is really important for them to feel a connection from a friendship level from someone before they enter into a relationship. And that's okay. For me, I'm more go with the flow. You know, I'm, I'm more YOLO. Listen, hey, I like you. You like me. Somebody lying if we're not together by week three. You hear me? <laughs> so for me, I don't mind, you know, getting into a relationship with someone that I have a strong connection with. It's completely fine. Um, similar to you, my children's father and I, I have two daughters. Well, of course, you, you mentioned that. I have two daughters. They have the same father. We were together for 12 years. Um, we met on, this tells you how old I am. We met on MySpace, okay? So we met on MySpace. And after two weeks of talking and dating, we decided to get into a relationship. And that lasted for 12 years. Now, while that wasn't my person, per se, I did see how you could easily fall in love with somebody and develop a friendship even in the midst of growing in the relationship. So to me, it's like, I think you can do both. I think they can be done simultaneously, but not everyone thinks that way. And I can understand that perspective too. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, I guess it depends on a person too. Like you oh, said. for sure. Yeah. yeah, there was, I don't know if you've seen this video, but there's a video I, I post. I posted on my Twitter. I think I've seen it on one of those social media outlets mm -hmm. where there was a lady who said she would rather be a mom than a wife. And she mm -hmm. would rather cater to a child than her husband. Did you see that video? No, no, I didn't see that. Okay. But mm -hmm. what what are your thoughts on that? Oh, I want to be all. I want to be all. I want to be uh, a great mother. I want to be a great wife. Uh, I want to be a great business owner. I want to be it all. I don't think that you need to just be one and not the other. I think that we are, women are designed to be able to manage and control and handle and manifest and produce. So for those reasons, we, we're able to multitask and we can do a really good job at it. So I, I am perfectly fine with doing all that. Now, some women, of course, just like her, it sounds like she chooses to be um, a wife instead of a mother. Is that what you said? She, she, right? wanted, she preferred the child over a husband. Oh, okay. She, okay. But that's the relationship she values. I think you can handle all of them. I think it's healthy to see a mother handling all of those relationships, vice versa for a man. I think it's healthy for children to see their father being a father and being a husband and being a leader and being, you know, all these other things, because that's what our life is. We manage different hats and that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. Cause women can multitask. I, yeah, I, I see it every day. Yeah. Um, I bet. I bet. <laughs> there's a, there's a book <laughs> called, I'm an avid book reader called um, Women Are Like Spaghetti and Men Are Like Waffles. Have you read that? No, I have not read that. Yeah. And he's just basically breaking down the each sex, how men compartmentalize things like waffles, mm -hmm. right? Like the little square. Mm -hmm. And women are like spaghetti. It's just a, a mixture of just everything all together, <laughs> you know? And uh, it helped me understand my wife. And I was just like, oh, okay, yeah, we, we really on different levels out here. That is so sweet. I I'm excited to hear about your marriage. Like that is beautiful. That is really beautiful. Yeah, love it. So thank you, uh, the Brave Hearts community. Those who are the subscribers and stuff, they they know my story for the most part. But I I asked myself, am I going to do this again after going through? Well, I was finalizing my divorce, and I was asking myself, do I even really want to go through this whole dating stuff again, or maybe I should just raise my daughter and just call it a day. Mm -hmm. And I'm scrolling on Instagram and I seen the picture and I was like, oh, let me check her out. Yes. Oh, let me check. And I, I just went through I was just looking at all her pictures and <laughs> they were all just, you know, classy pictures or whatever. And I just kept liking her pictures. And, and granted, this was 2017. So I guess I'm kind of dating myself mm -hmm. to start liking. And then and then. I posted on Twitter our first conversation when I slid in her inbox. Uh -huh. So, you know, we just had this little conversation. I was like, hey, have you heard my podcast? You know, we just started talking. And next thing you know, here we are uh, oh. coming up on six years later. That is beautiful. Congratulations. Yeah. That is beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is the bonus round. With these questions, there's no right or wrong answer. It's just strictly about Jazzy Nicole. Let me know okay. your thoughts. What is the biggest mistake you see women make in relationships? 
Oh, the biggest mistake. Uh, not being vulnerable out of fear. Mm. Yeah. Yep. Let's talk about it. Let's talk about it. Yeah, give me um, a breakdown. Talk to me. So I think that a lot of times we kind of hide pieces of us because we're afraid that maybe that person may or may not accept that. Um, the more vulnerable that I have been, the more the more transparent that I have been in my dating experience. I feel like it's opened me, opening me up to um, a different quality of men. And it's also allowing me to see ones that are for me and ones that are not for me. Of course, I'm not super duper open with every single person. I use discernment. Um, but those people that I think I can see going to the next level, being vulnerable with them has been very important for me um, and for them as well. Um, you can see if they can take that piece of you or if they can't take that piece of you and then you can maneuver from from there going forward. So I look at it like I am who I am. You either love me this way or you won't like me this way. And that's OK either way. Um, but I think it's helped. It's helped me a lot with my dating selection. Mm. Yeah, I like that. I've heard someone say that before about the vulnerability. So mm -hmm. at what point does Jazzy Nicole comes vulnerable? Like, is there a place where you start to feel comfortable? Is it like after a certain amount of time or is it the conversation is so good that you open up? Like what yeah. makes you become vulnerable with maybe a certain man? Well, conversation is very important to me. I love a good, healthy conversation. I love to be able to go back and forth. I'm not always going to agree um, with what the other person says. I, I like to I like to conversate, but I don't think there's really a, a hard stop point on when that actually occurs. Um, but if you can tell that somebody's putting that investment in you, they're wanting to get to know you. Plus, I love to ask questions. I have a video up um, on YouTube, there was almost a million views talking about the questions that I like to ask in the dating phase, you know, so asking these questions and they're answering. And when that person's vulnerable with you, it helps you be vulnerable with them. And now you guys are just exchanging energy. And while it may not end to a relationship, it may end to a bomb friendship or at least them getting something off their chest that they weren't able to disclose. I hear all the time, man, Jazz, you're just so easy to talk to. Like, I could just tell you so much information. I could just, I feel like, you know, this, this, and this, and that's, that's a really good feeling for me because I just want to get to know the person that I'm dealing with, whether it's just going to be a friendship, whether it's just going to be a relationship, whether it may be more. Mm -hmm. So there's no hard stop. There's no real cut answer on that one. It's just when we both feel comfortable to release that information. Mm -hmm. I think that's the best response. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, because vulnerability and I like what you said as far as someone being vulnerable, up front, mm -hmm. like who's willing to take the first step. Yeah. I think that's important because, and again, some people can handle you. Some people can. It just depends right. on the person. And right. uh, I love asking questions myself. Mm -hmm. I, I love, obviously, is what I do, right? <laughs> so, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> and because I remember there was a time, transparent moment, when my wife and I, when we were dating, mm -hmm. she was very transparent to me about something, and I was just like, "Oh," and my response wasn't the greatest. Oh, and mm -hmm. she felt like, oh, I can't trust this guy. But then she kind of circled the block. And after some time had passed, well, I don't say circle the block, but we were talking and she was like, remember that time I told you about that situation? She was like, I felt like I couldn't trust you. She said, but I, I felt like I gave away too much too soon. in that Ooh, conversation. Yeah. yeah, that's valid, too. And that's that's also something that I kind of deal with as well is. Am I giving away too much too soon? Because uh, you you can't share everything, of course. But that's also where discernment comes in. Mm -hmm. So when I say I'm a believer, like I definitely believe in God. I follow him. I love him. And I feel like he allows me to um, use discernment when I speak and then also when I receive. Because people can tell you anything. You can ask all the questions. They're going to tell you whatever you want to hear. But you have to allow that discernment. You got to allow a God to speak to your spirit while they're talking to you to see if this is someone that you can trust with that information. I've definitely slipped up several times and shared too much information with someone I thought was ready for that or that I thought I could trust with that and I couldn't. So I understand what standpoint you're coming from with that, for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. From seeing your parents' relationship, what did it teach you about marriage? Uh, so the most recent, recent relationship taught me that, um, marriage, see, okay, let me, let me add a disclaimer. Cause I gotta be honest. I've never been married. 
So, um, and, and I, I can't say that I've seen too many healthy marriages in my adulthood or even in my childhood. You know, I came from a broken home. Mother and father weren't married for more than two weeks. So I haven't, I haven't came from that. Um, now, do I know a few happily married couples? Yes. So I'm kind of going from what I've seen and from what I think that a healthy marriage looks like, um, but not from experience. Mm -hmm. um, so what it's taught me in, in my relationships for a while, I thought that I was ready for marriage and I really wasn't um, because I wasn't fully healed. Now, of course, you can't be 100 percent healed, but you have to go through a process. Mm -hmm. So in, in my singlehood, um, I'm learning more about what Jasmine likes. So that way, when Jasmine does get married, she doesn't lose that piece of her because individuality is very important. I want to be able to pour into my spouse. So um, what I also have learned in my past relationships is to be able to listen because I love to talk, but listening is a whole other skill. Um, so I'm learning that. And even through my friends relationships and when they talk to me about their relationships, like, are you listening to him? Um, it's something that I, I talk about with my friends as well. So that that's what those are the two biggest pieces that I've taken away um, from my most recent relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because listening is a wonderful trait to have. Oh, yeah. You know, um, and very few people have mastered it. Very true. <laughs> yeah. Know? So it's a it's a great trait to have. Um, that'll yeah. put you on a upper echelon of uh, to be desired, you know, for marriage. Like, mm -hmm. But Jasmine is a great listener. Yeah. That always helps. Last question. <laughs> <laughs> is it easier to love yourself or someone else? Ooh, that's a good question. Is it easier to love yourself or someone else? It's easier to love someone else because we see all of our flaws every single day. We look in the mirror and we're like, oh, you know what? That one eye is crooked. You know what I'm saying? That one eye stays lazy. You know what I mean? But <laughs> with someone else, we don't see all of their flaws. We don't see all of that. We see everything beautiful first. So it's easier to love someone else it is a process. It is a process, a very hard process to learn to love yourself. You have to be strategic. You have to be honest. You have to be transparent. You have to be weak. You got to be strong. Like it's so many different things that you have to be to, to love yourself, but it's so easy to love somebody else. So I'm going to say someone else. Okay. Now let's make that personal. Yeah. Is it for you? Is this easier for you to love someone else? In this phase of my life? Oh, yeah. no. Maybe I love Jazzy. Okay. I love her. Okay. So, so in this season of my life, yeah. I, I love who I am. I love who I am. And for that reason, uh, it's a little bit harder for me to fully say that I can love someone else because I haven't experienced loving someone else in that capacity in quite a while. Mm. Yeah. So... Is there a point in your life, like, what was the switch that turned on that made Jazzy Nicole love herself? Was there a situation or what went, what happened? Um, there was there was a lot of situations that kind of piled. Um, one, becoming a single mother. Um, I went through a lot of ups and downs with that. My weight loss journey, I went through a lot of ups and downs with that. But I noticed that my daughters pay so much attention to every single thing that I do literally everything, my mannerisms, the way I speak, the way I speak to myself, the way I speak to other people, they notice everything about that. Um, and what I don't want them to do is to reciprocate, um, not loving themselves and not thinking that they are beautiful, not thinking that they are smart, kind, wonderful women of God. I don't, I don't want them to think that. So that all, all those things played a factor. So it was so many different pieces. It wasn't just one event. It was just so many different things that happened in my life. I had to get to my lowest point, my lowest, to be able to build myself up. And once you get to that low point and you start building yourself up, you will never allow yourself to get that low again. And I will never allow myself to feel as bad as I felt when I was at my lowest. I know what it took to bring me back up. And that's why I love the strength that I have within me. And for that reason, that's why I love G Jesse. <laughs> No, that's what's up. I, I love it. Love the self-confidence. You got to have it. It's always yeah. tell people uh, it's it's hard to try to show somebody how you, how to love you when you don't love yourself. Exactly. And people can see it. You think that you're hiding it, but people can see it. They can see how you talk about yourself. 
They can see, how, for instance, you know, you go online and people post things about themselves all the time, like negative things. Like I like to joke. Okay. But one thing I'm not going to do is talk down about who I am. You know, I, I, it took a lot to build me up. So I'm not going to talk down about myself, but people do see that they pay attention. Yep. That's right. That's right. And people can tell, people can see you coming a mile away if you have confidence or not. Oh yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah. I always tell people to the point of where you love yourself, like to the degree of you have confidence is to the degree mm -hmm. of who you would date. Oh, that's valid. I agree. Yeah. Yeah. And no shade to the exes. No shade if you're listening or watching. But I'm just saying, you know, I, when I look back, I'm like, oh, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't have self-confidence when I was with her. <laughs> I'm just that, is, that is very valid. That's very valid. I mean, every ex play the factor. They play the role in something. They help. They help with something. I think in any relationship, you should be able to walk away with something that you learned from that about yourself or about your journey or even about them. Like you should be able to walk away with something. Something was good in it. That's why you stayed. So, yeah, no, I completely understand. Yeah, my uh, my ex, we were married for 15 years and mm -hmm. I'm grateful for that experience, even though it didn't end with us, you know, till death do us part. But right. I learned so I became a better husband this time around than the first time. Yes. Yes. Yep. Mm -hmm. So I learned a lot. So I never will ever talk bad about my ex. There's I got almost 500 something videos up on YouTube. I've never said anything bad about my ex because mm -hmm. I know the part yeah. I played in it. Oh, yeah. You know, and I think I healed faster because I took accountability for my actions. There you go. Yes. Yeah. And I respect that. I definitely respect that. One of the questions I do like to ask I'm um, is, you know, in thinking about your past relationships um, without blaming your ex, what happened? Because a lot of times you can be talking to people and they'll they'll automatically blame, you know, something that happened on their ex. Like she was this, she was that, he was this, he was that. Okay, but what role did you play? And that tells you a lot because um, if they say nothing, like I made no mistakes, like, come on. You, you didn't make one, I mean, I don't say anything, but I'm just like, you didn't make one mistake. You, <laughs> when did you cheat? No, but <laughs> I, like to, I like to ask that question because it really does open your eyes. And for them, maybe that's the first time they really self-reflected on that relationship and where they could have improved. We all have opportunities in every facet, every relationship, there's an opportunity. And if you can capture that and you can grow from that, it's just making you a better person. Yes. I agree. Yeah. Cause I know my issues. Were you, were you asking me that question? Oh yes. <laughs> I was. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I talked about this in probably a couple of my videos, but for uh -huh. me looking back, for one, I was, I married at 24. Mm -hmm. um, my ex-wife was 31 and she had a 12 year old son. Mm -hmm. So here it is. I'm 24 raising a 12 year old, which is funny because even though we're divorced to this day, me and him is still cool. Uh -huh. But anyway, back to the question. I was immature. Mm -hmm. uh, I was selfish. I was a bad communicator. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't as, I didn't know how to express how I, how I feel or how I felt. Mm -hmm. So that led to a lot of stonewalling um, because I couldn't express myself. I didn't know, you know, how to express how I feel. So example, talking to my wife now, I use different words instead of me saying I'm mad. I would say I'm feeling vulnerable right now or I'm like vulnerable mm -hmm. moment you know what I'm saying so now she can listen to me from a different set of ears mm -hmm. if I use different verbiage yeah so um that's something that I learned but yeah I was looking back um I had a lot of growing to do like the immaturity and the selfishness like I would go to the store and buy myself something not buy her anything like it, it was bad. And I think a lot of stuff just came from just a hurt place and not knowing how to process how I felt. And from the past, from my childhood, I didn't know how to deal with that. So through therapy, 
uh, and, 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 you know, spending time with God and having mentors and reading books and stuff like that, I got better. And I didn't want to blow this marriage because I was like, I got to get myself together. Um, mm-hmm. And knowing my issues, I was like, I need to work on those things. So even with my my wife now, sometimes I get uncomfortable because the things I used to battle with, now I'm open with to her. Yeah. So, if that answered your question. It did answer my question. And I love, I love what you said where you prefaced your response with, I'm having a vulnerable moment or I feel this kind of way or this is what I'm going through because it does allow you as the listener to capture it from not a defensive perspective, but from an understanding perspective, like allowing someone to be in that moment with you is really important. So I love that you do that. That's a great idea. Yeah. 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 It it works. It could be challenging, but if you wouldn't be vulnerable, like you said, it can take your relationship relationship to another level. Mm -hmm, For sure. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Jazzy Nicole, I want to acknowledge you for being a single mom taking care of your kids out here, making it happen because single parenting, shout out to y'all. Like I, <laughs> y'all are awesome. Uh, I want to acknowledge you for that, for being a single mom and taking care of your, your kids and being responsible. And also I want to acknowledge you for the weight loss journey, because Thanks. that's not easy as somebody who lost weight. I get it. Yes. Um, yes. And then to not only just to lose weight, but inspire others to lose weight. So I want to acknowledge you for those things. Well, thank you very much. And congratulations to you too. 280 to 190. Listen, come on now. You did amazing. Yeah. (laughs) That was great. Thank you. Thank you. Well, let everyone know how they can get in touch with you. So I am Jazzy Nicole on all platforms. Now I don't do Twitter. However, I'm on Instagram at Jazzy Nicole. I'm on Facebook at, at Jazzy Nicole, YouTube at Jazzy Nicole. The only one that's different is TikTok. I'm Mommy and Us. Um, so yeah, follow me there. For sure. I'll have that linked up in the description below. So Brave Arts community, you heard it here. Make sure you connect with Jazzy Nicole because she's doing some awesome things out here. I only bring the best <laughs> on the podcast and on the YouTube channel. If you are watching this, make sure you hit the subscribe button and share this with someone. As I always say, I'm trying to be, I need my videos to be in group chats. I realize you get more views when you're in group chats, (laughs) when people can share your video and then they share it with their friends. So share my video in your group chats. (laughs) Um, So make sure you hit the notification bell too. So that way you get that notification. If you are listening to this via podcast, make sure you leave a rating and review By doing so, it puts you in the drawing for a free Amazon gift card. Who doesn't like free things? This is Sean Heineman with special guests. Jazzy Nicole. Hey, thanks again for watching another segment of It's Scary to Remarry. I have so much more amazing content and some phenomenal guests as well. People who've been through a divorce, people who remarried, people who desire to marry. So much great content. So make sure that you hit one of these videos. It's somewhere around here, but anyway, go watch another video.